You don't become good by trying to be good, but by finding the goodness that is already within you and allowing that goodness to emerge. But it can only emerge if something fundamental changes in your state of consciousness. So what that means, if, if nothing changes in your state of consciousness, the ego has many ideas. It says, I want to be a spiritual person. I, I want to be recognized as a spiritual person. I want to be more spiritual than all these people. And I'm definitely more spiritual than you. So the ego has all kinds of ideas of what it wants to be. And it might even say, yes, I want to be good because it wants to have a better image of itself. But on that level, but the, the essential dysfunction of the ego is still operating. So this is why we have the phrase, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Because no matter how good your intentions are, when you're still trapped in the ego, it will always take you into conflict eventually. So you have to go deeper beyond the realm of opposites where there's good and bad and reach a place within yourself that is unconditioned, that is what I sometimes call the formless, expressed beautifully in the Old Testament, in the little saying, be still and know that I am God. That is, and that's in the Old Testament, it contains the entire wisdom of religion in those few words. Be still, meaning go to that place where the mind is no longer operating, where there's, you are just conscious without thinking. And that is the level where the eternal resides. When you went first to school, you went to kindergarten. And in kindergarten, the idea was to push along so that you could get into first grade and then push along so that you could get into second grade, third grade, so on, going up and up. And then you went to high school and this was a great transition in life. And now the pressure is being put on. You must get ahead. You must go up the grades and finally be good enough to get to college. And then when you get to college, you're still going step by step, step by step, up to the great moment in which you're ready to go out into the world. And then when you get out into this famous world, comes the struggle for success in profession or business. And again, there seems to be a ladder before you, something for which you're reaching all the time. And then, suddenly, when you're about 40 or 45 years old in the middle of life, you wake up one day and say, Huh? I've arrived. And by Jove, I feel pretty much the same as I've always felt. In fact, I'm not so sure that I don't feel a little bit cheated. Because you see, you were fooled. You were always living for somewhere where you aren't. We spend a big hunk of our lives believing that the way that we become, quote, successful, happy, fulfilled, self-actualized, whatever it might be, is on the basis of what I accomplish, what my resume looks like, um, how many promotions I get. And so we send our children off to school and we ask them to learn to identify themselves on how much they get and what they accomplish. Your grades become more important than what it is that you are studying. What you own, what clothes you wear, what labels you have, and so on. And we become obsessed with this kind of absurdity. And we, this is the false self at work. You know, look back 10 years ago, five years ago, 15 years ago, and think of a decision you made that if you would have made a different decision, you'd have a totally different life today. Better or worse, I don't know, but totally different. The most important decision you can make above any on the face of the earth is deciding that no matter what happens in your life, no matter what happens, you're going to live in a beautiful state. So if life is not happening the way you think it is, it should happen, you're unhappy. If life happens the way you think it should happen, you are happy. It's as simple as that. So if life has to happen the way you think it should happen, first of all, how you think with 
how much focus you think, how much stability is there in your thought and how much reverberance is there in the thought process will determine whether your thought will become a reality or is it just an empty thought or how you do not create any impediments for your thought by creating negative thought process. This possible is something possible or not possible is destroying humanity. What is possible and not possible is not your business, it's nature's business. Your business is just to strive for what you want. The decision to say, I am not going to suffer, that if suffering arises, pain's one thing, suffering's another. Mm. Suffering is when you're like, suffering could be worry, could be anger, could be frustration, it's anything that takes you out of a beautiful state. And here's what people don't get, you can end suffering by stop focusing on yourself and focus on something you want to serve greater than yourself. Your children, your wife, your mission, your life. You can get out of it in an instant because the nature of the human mind is to constantly compare things. Your mind, your brain is a two million year old device and it is not designed to make you happy. It's designed to make you survive. And that's why it's always looking for what's wrong. Life is supposed to be good, not just for some, but for all of you. And when it isn't, something has gone terribly wrong. And every single time, the thing that has gone terribly wrong is that an orientation or a perspective has been developed and practiced to the point that other evidence can't come in. In other words, when you have decided something in a very powerful way, then it must be because law of attraction will always present to you exactly the package that you are practicing all day every day You've got no argument with that and so our we do not sense that your life reflects this now in this powerful way at one time yes but we want to say to you that you are taking more upon yourself this is really what we would like to say to you soul is also the center of the world which is a frightening proposition and, and not one that's easily comprehensible. Solzhenitsyn's work in the Gulag Archipelago is particularly enlightening in this regard um, because he insisted that it was a pre preconception of our Judeo-Christian heritage that each person was a center of the cosmos. And you can think of that as a center of consciousness, right? A center from which being itself is not only reflected but also generated and it was Solzhenitsyn's belief and Dostoevsky's as well and, and I think Jung would have been in accordance with this and Nietzsche as well for that matter that in some manner that we don't fathom because we don't understand the structure of the world very well the outcome of the world is dependent on our choices and, and equally on all of our choices. And it, I don't understand, I know, that's, I know that to be true, I feel that to be true. It's, it's part of the doctrine that each person is of intrinsic and equal worth. Part of that doctrine is that each person is, has intrinsic and equal responsibility and that we're each capable of generating a fair bit of hell around us and for other people, but also capable of generating a tremendous amount of good. And that the fate of the world as it careens through eternity is actually a consequence of the ethical decisions of each of us. It's a terrifying idea. It's no wonder that people flee from it into hedonism, let's say, and, and ideology, because it's very frightening possibility that the choices that you make day to day or fail to make have this profound and lasting effect on the structure of reality, but I don't really see any way out of that conclusion. Come up with 10 laws you are going to spend or you're going to live the remainder of your life under. That could be one of the things I teach in my work, don't die. One of the secrets to legendary is longevity. So outlive your industry peers. Amazing what happens when you get into such great physical health. 
that you just outlive everyone around you. You know, it's 90, you're, you're 90, no, you have no competition. Imagine how easy it will be for you to dominate your field. Imagine how good you're going to be if you're 103, still rocking your game. So the point is, don't die. Protect your health. Hack aging. Eat the right supplements. Work out every day. Get you know, run my two massage protocol. Make sure you get fresh air. The point is simply this. One of your 10 life laws could simply be don't die. One of your 10 life laws could be give more than you take. One of your 10 life laws could be spend an hour alone building your self relationship. You know, I was reading Marcus Aurelius very early this morning, the great Roman emperor, and he talked about the shortness of life, but he also talked about this. Find some time every day to be amid tranquility so you could think. See, when you're in the noise, you can't think. The noise of distraction and attraction and diversion by technology. When you're alone, and I've found it's the best thing first thing in the morning, you can actually think about your values and you can actually get to know yourself again, and you can actually breathe, and you can actually contemplate, what am I gonna do today? How am I gonna live? How can I make today on earth a valuable day?